just want to um, echo th that point. So our question was, what are the main barriers to sustainable agricultural production and how can they be overcome? What you'll see when I articulate our response to this question is how much overlap there is with the uh, responses to the um, previous questions. So we had a very good discussion, or at least I thought it was a good discussion, and I'll try and um, summarize what we concluded, which was that, and I think we'd got general agreement across the group as to um, what we were thinking of. So the barriers we thought you could put in different categories, and we first of all thought that there would be primary, primary barriers, secondary barriers, and tertiary barriers, but then we realized actually um, that they're all potentially rate limiting. Um, there's a feedback between them, and so we'll just talk about there being different categories of barrier. And so one category of barrier we identified is in the uh, um, policy and markets. Another is in levers and incentives. And then another category is in research and research capacity. So uh, policy and markets. So um, markets, we thought there is a need um, for somehow restructuring the economics of um, agricultural um, markets uh, um, such that the value in those markets is more evenly distributed and so certainly that the growers uh, get a more um, uh, equitable share of the returns uh, from uh, the markets. Precisely how we achieve that would be through various policy measures uh, that we didn't feel uh, we were sufficiently informed about or uh, to actually specify um, what they are. In terms of the levers and incentives, well, so the word subsidies came up as has in the uh, conclusions from the other groups. Uh, but we thought that the framing of thinking about levers and incentives uh, needs to move away from the preoccupation with yield, um, which is the metric used at present um, to um, uh, uh, <clears throat> assign values to uh, the agricultural market. So um, we didn't come up with an all-embracing term that we could uh, use to replace yield, but we recognized that it had to have a component to it that recognizes sustainability, um, and it also has a component to it that recognizes the quality of the food produced in the agricultural system. And I have to say that um, we also tried to move away from the tension over livestock as opposed to um, plant-based uh, agriculture. Uh, we thought that the policy wonks, when they um, determine the policy, would be the ones to identify how one puts a value um, or, or ascri ascribes what the priorities within the system should be uh, for the different types of um, agricultural uh, system or the different agricultural systems that one would uh, uh, come up with in the end. In the um, other um, capacity, and probably the one that I've got most to talk about, um, res related to research and capacity, Again, you'll find resonance with um, many of the conclusions drawn by the uh, previous groups. I think the overarching term is, um, that describes our views is the need for diversity at uh, different um, levels. Um, so in terms of research and research capacity, um, we recognized that there needs to be more diverse research capacity. Uh, we recognized in particular 
um, the need for um, skills in handling data, um, making sense of data, um, skills in integrating um, biological sciences, data sciences um, with um, engineering and the various technologies that are emerging um, associated with engineering and material science um, that are so important in um, agriculture as it evolves. Um, we identified within the areas of research that we think should be prioritized as agriculture evolves. We identified a number of uh, topics. Um, so one topic that uh, came up in our discussion, and actually it's surprising that it's not a term that we've heard about, I don't think in any of the discussions over the last day or two, is the term orphan crops. Um, uh, and we see a huge potential under the umbrella of diversifying agricultural systems for using uh, modern genetics uh, and other innovations in agricultural systems um, to accelerate the development of um, orphan crops. Uh, we recognize the need to have um, research that is aimed at enhancing soil quality and different levels at which one might want to think about soil quality. So at one level, one would be thinking about soil carbon and the chemistry and storage of um, carbon in soils. Uh, but equally, um, we recognize the importance of characterizing and understanding the microbiome in more detail um, than uh, we do at present. Um, we recognize the need for, well, I've said this already, multidisciplinarity, interdisciplinarity, international coordination in, in research. And um, I think that is a summary of what the group came up with. But I'm happy to defer to other members of the group if they can identify topics that I didn't highlight sufficiently. David, I think you did. I just, I think the research and research capacity could be expanded to being technical and technical capacity in where the research is going to be delivered. So it's more than just us researchers. Um, and then also in the appropriateness of the research that we're doing and ways of delivering it as well. So we had discussions, where's Susan, about golden rice, et cetera, et cetera. So, but it's, it's covered in that. Thank you very much. Steve, Susan, was that? Okay, good. Oh, that's a relief. <laughs> <laughs>